Hi, this is Mariah Gillow from The Hollywood Reporter. I'm here with Lisa Edelstein from Girlfriend's Guide to Divorce. Yay! How are you? I'm really good. You were across the street at the SAG building. Yeah, I got to talk to actors. How, what was that like? It was really nice. I like talking to people, I, I, you know, with a point of view. Uh, mm -hmm. for, there's a reason why you're there, and so therefore the questions are sort of molded to form that, and uh, uh, I had a great time. It's nice to be able to sort of give people some advice and let them know what the path is like. and give them a little bit of your experience. I love it. Yeah, yeah. so you're uh, you're kind of coming up on, you're towards the end of Girlfriend's Guide to Divorce. That's right. Uh, season four starts tonight. Season four is starting tonight, which is very exciting. Yes. And then uh, we already shot through the end of season five, which no will way. be airing hopefully this winter sometime. That's amazing. Yeah. So you're kind of at this point of reflection. Yes, as a human being, I am reflecting. <laughs> um, I. What an amazing journey it, it has been. But I still have to like save a little bit for when I have to promote season five. Right? <laughs> That's yeah. the weird thing. We're done, but the show continues for the next year. And there are a lot of surprises to come. Yeah, some really beautiful things. I love season four. Season yeah. four is, uh, we have Leslie Ann Warren comes back and Barry Boswick playing my parents. Mm -hmm. They have a really beautiful turn. Uh, Retta is back as a regular this year. Um, we've got some exciting return guest stars and some new guest stars, which has been really nice. I saw you tease something out on your Instagram. Yeah, yeah. Which one? There was a photo of you. A oh, still and someone, from, someone's arm. You're like, guess who's back? And <laughs> I don't think they were, we were talking about you. We were talking about the arm in yeah. the shot. Yeah. Yeah. So they're below it. He's going to be in tonight's episode. <laughs> okay. Um, Warren Christie comes oh, back as oh, well, great. but I think you already see him in the promo, <laughs> so it's sort of blown. It's out. Um, it ruined it. Sorry. <laughs> no, you didn't. Oh, you did. The network okay, did. Oh, <laughs> they put right. it in the promo. Oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> good. We're safe. Yeah, you're okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so for anyone who hasn't seen Girlfriend's Guide to Divorce, can you tell us a little bit about, it was based on a book by Vicki Iovine? Not quite. It was uh, Vicki, Vicki Iovine uh, wrote this book, these books called Girlfriend's Guide to Pregnancy, Girlfriend's Guide to Raising a Toddler, and she was married to... What's his name? Jimmy. Uh, Jimmy Ivine. Yeah. And had a, he, when she was coming out with a book about how to keep your marriage sexy once the kids are back in school, he was very publicly outed for having an affair with one of the women in one of his bands. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the bands he represented. Mm -hmm. And so she sort of had to promote a book that was clearly not something she had succeeded in life because her marriage had fallen apart, even though it wasn't her fault necessarily so so that is the inspiration for this show my character in the very beginning plays this woman who writes these books girlfriend's guide to divorce blah 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 and um secretly and she's about to come out with a book about how to keep your marriage sexy when secretly we have seen that her marriage is actually dead her husband is sleeping elsewhere and is coming back in the morning and pretending to have been there for the kids and they're angry at each other and and she's so freaked out about the lie that when she does her first big public book signing she gets really wasted and outs herself as being a failure and mm -hmm. her marriage being a lie and wishing her husband was dead because it would be much more simple if he was just dead. Uh, and so thus she destroys her career and then you follow her sort of trying to put the pieces back together again, figure out how to co-parent with an ex um, and lean on her girlfriends and, and in exploring a life as a single woman again in her, in her 40s. Mm -hmm. and so that's the premise in a very, very long version of it. <laughs> and it's so, I mean, the show is so fun. It's 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 light, but then it has these moments of brevity in it. Like, is it is it a rewarding experience to, like, just kind of play somebody who can go to the different places? Yeah, like, for sure. As an actor, it's, like, the greatest experience in the world. Yeah. Part of it is being the lead of a show because, of course, that story is told more fully. Right. You um, get to have, like, all the human yeah. emotions. It's incredible. <laughs> it's an amazing experience. Yeah. yeah, exactly. As a human being, I get to sort of put all of those human being things things in there. Um, yeah, I really enjoy that. So um, I get to be super funny and I get to be super dramatic and mm -hmm. everything in between. Um, some of the things to look forward to in season four is your relationship with your daughter. Yeah. Uh, oh. Tell me about how where that's going. So, God, these girls, the girl <laughs> who plays my daughter, Connor Dwelly, and um, the girl who plays uh, Alana's daughter, mm -hmm. um, just grew up so much when we got back to shoot seasons three, four, and five, mm -hmm. they were women all of a sudden. Really funny, really dry, young women. 
people, you know, you go from knowing a kid to knowing someone who makes you laugh so hard as a grown up uh, <laughs> is a really nice experience. And uh, her Connor's performance in this in this uh, in this season is is really beautiful. She she gets her first boyfriend. She has her first. I don't know if I want to ruin it, but you know what happens when you get your first boyfriend. Right. Things happen. Mm-hmm. Dot dot dot. And so. That, that turning point is really for both of them. Mm-hmm. I don't know what episode that happens in. Does anybody know I, what it is? I think that's two. Is that two? I think so, yeah. <gasps> oh my god, <laughs> episode two so. is really fun. <laughs> Let's just say one word, gynecologist. <laughs> right. And what makes you think more about fun than gynecologist? Exactly. <laughs> what, what fun and funny, it's just built in. Yeah. Oh, no, one of the things about the show that, uh, you know, was kind of uh, what. Uh, one of the things that stick out about the show is the style. I mean, it's such a female-dominated show. There's so much fashion. Um, Do people kind of go up to you on the street and talk to you about it? Do they want style tips? This woman at the SAG thing just told me that she now dresses like Abby. She said (laughs) she used to always dress like Abby, and then she stopped, and now, and indeed, her outfit was an Abby outfit. (laughs) She had an A-line skirt on with a waist and cute little shoes and a fitted top. It was pretty hilarious. Is there a conscientious choice from season to season to change up the style of the characters? Uh, yeah, the costume designer definitely wants to have fun. And yeah. uh, and so we do sort of pick a silhouette that will take us through a season that oh. we can play with. Um, the frustrating part about seasons shooting seasons three, four, and five all at once on a show that's so devoted to fashion is that by the time we air season five, it'll be last year's fashion. So that's mm-hmm. very, that was frustrating. Gotta so there's a lot, of, a lot of bare shoulders. Oh, okay. um, but we can't help it. We the did cold our best. Shoulder look is never out of style. It's beautiful. <laughs> Thank you, Donna Karen. Yeah. Um, so, uh, tell me a bit about your scenes with Retta. You um, you get to kind of uh, go into business with her or start. Yeah. So Barbara and Abby go into business together. They're mm-hmm. they're good friends. Um, they're not great at business together. They <laughs> have their they each have their limitations mm-hmm. and their their special skills. And it doesn't necessarily uh, automatically weave seamlessly <laughs> together. So um, I think it's true for any friendship that tries to translate into business. But this is a TV show, so it's really bad. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, they love each other. And one of the nice things about the show and its exploration of friendship is that these women have they have an amazing ability to overcome betrayal and overcome disappointment with each other. They're, mm. Ultimately, their love for each other is much more important than whatever it is that's bothering them about each other. And, and that's a really nice thing to see. Yeah, do you think that's really important to have that sort of story being told today? I do, because there, there just aren't enough female relationships represented on television to begin with. And usually they're... Well, historically, they've been uh, bitchy or you know, snappy or soap opera competitive betrayal. Yeah, all about betrayal, and and I think it's really important to see women who love each other mm-hmm. uh, and support each other, and are also different from each other and frustrate the hell out of each other, but have committed relationships with each other. That's all it is. It's a committed relationship, mm-hmm. and I think anybody who's experienced a long-term friendship. There's going to be times where you just it, they're driving you nuts, but 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 you still love that person deeply because there's something special about who they are and how who they bring out in you and and you want to celebrate those things, mm-hmm. and that's that's what we have on our show for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so uh, there is something uh, an interesting anecdote of your life is that you got married the day before you started filming Girlfriend's Guide. To yes. <laughs> married for the first time. <laughs> Amazing. So, what better time? <laughs> um, where, yeah. Where do you mind the uh, the experiences that Abby McCarthy have? I mean, do you go back? You go back to past relationships, or um, or are you like looking into inspirations with other other performances of other actresses? Or I think that no matter what your actual human story is, you have experienced all the feelings you need to feel in order to act feelings. Mm. Um, and and if you are empathetic at all and you tell yourself the story that's on the page, then, then that story will inform how what you're experiencing in the scene. Mm. Um, some people are, some people, everybody's way of acting is different. So some people are very much into 
retrieving memories of trauma and, and applying it. And even in that case, you're not necess- it's not necessarily linear. Like, I remember the time that I got divorced. It might be, I remember the time that my, my father left, you mm-hmm. know, and that right. feeling of abandonment. So what you're really sure. reaching for is a deeper understanding of what is the, what is the core feeling in this, in this scene. So, yes, if you're reaching backwards in time, you go to the core feeling. You don't necessarily try to find the exact circumstance. Um, and, and that is true for me, although I don't do, I find that reaching backwards takes me out of a scene. So Mm. I try to, I try to keep it present and understand what that, and really inform the scene in my brain. Like, here's what's happening. Here's my relationship with these people. How would that feel? Mm. Uh, and the longer you play a role, the more you are in it, the more you intrinsically understand the relationships that are around you on the show. Um, mm. So a lot of that work is done over time, and it's what one of the joys of playing a long-form story is that as you go along, you already have you have built-in pieces that you no longer need to constantly create. They're there the minute you walk into the fake house. Right. They're part of they're part of the world when you put on that outfit. Mm-hmm. And the longer you get to know your co-stars, yeah, do you start to kind of create more more of the emotions around how you feel about them as people over like the character arc or but they're not being themselves they're not being themselves they're being in character so uh so you're definitely you you definitely from being familiar with somebody helps because you're both more present and more comfortable in the scene together and so reactions can be more genuine as filtered through the character um uh so it definitely is more fun the more you know somebody Mm -hmm. um as long as everybody has is having fun making things up as they go along, not everybody acts the same way. Again, so there are some people who don't like to do anything they haven't thought about previously. So they chore- emotionally choreograph their whole scene, and that's for me a harder person to act across from because one of the great joys of acting is interacting Mm -hmm. and being surprised by what somebody has to offer will then affect what you reflect back to them when you when you talk back and and that roller coaster ride is really beautiful and uh if if a person doesn't know how to react to you then they're never receiving what you're giving and they're always just doing this sort of pre-planned performance and so it's not as much fun it's hard work yeah but when two people are playing, when two people can listen and sort of like, whoa, I mean, you're still within the confines of your character and within the confines of the scene and the choreography of that scene, but there is a whole dance that's happening that's that's so much fun and can be so unexpected and, uh, and so exciting to experience. What's been one of your, uh, one of those moments for you uh, in the past, in past seasons? Was there... An experience with a scene that really flowed that you well funnily did. enough in the pilot of the show uh, the very first time I worked with Paul who plays my ex-husband was our big fight scene at the end of the pilot mm. and it was a huge emotional scene that involved running upstairs and into a room and kids coming in and it was everything it was all about our divorce and it was funny and it was sad it was one of the scenes I auditioned with mm. and Paul and I had this magical experience, even though we didn't know each other, of feeling like we were family. Um, And our interactions felt historical, even though we had never interacted really before. Um, And so it was, we all felt it that day. We're like, this, this, that's when you know you have something special, where it's like, this is, there's something happening here that's really exciting. And both of us are in it. So that was that was the first time it happened on this show, but it happened many times on this show. Mm. Um, yeah, it's, it's a it's one of my favorite things about about acting that that kind of magical moment. Mm, lovely. Yeah. Um, so uh, you are sitting on a huge secret of no, wrapping up season four and five, right? Do you think that the that the fans will be happy with the? Will they have closure at the yeah, end of the will. series? Yeah, they will. And that's the nice thing about knowing that a series is ending, is mm-hmm. that you can write towards that ending. You mm-hmm. can satisfy the fans. You can leave people feeling happy that they stayed. Um, and most shows don't get that opportunity. Most shows, they think they're going on, and then they get suddenly canceled. Mm-hmm. But um, it was it was a really wonderful opportunity to tell a complete story. Yeah. yeah. That's great. 
Great, yeah. Um, so I have a couple of questions for a game that we play with all of our actors. First, best, last, worst. It's just four questions. Okay. It's not really a game. Okay, I hate games. So I'm like celebrity already. Okay. <laughs> First job that made you think, I've made it. <laughs> my very first, when I got my SAG card, I had one line in the Doors movie, and I had to make it up because uh, Oliver Stone cast me in the movie after I told him off at the audition because mm -hmm. I thought the way he was handling the auditions were disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> we had to, all the women who, was, uh, who were auditioning for the Doors had to do fuck scenes. Sorry, oh, can we swear on yes, the show? Yes. <laughs> and the one that I was supposed to do had I'm not kidding, this is really crude, so if you're watching with children, you might want to take them into the other room. Um, literally the scene was Jim Morrison's girlfriend. Uh, Jim Morrison tells his girlfriend to go in the corner, bend over, spread her ass cheeks, and tell her that her cunt is his, and so she does. And that's the scene they were giving people to audition oh. for the doors. Oh. <laughs> and I was like, I wanted it to be in the doors, but I didn't sure. know what to do about this whole situation. And I got there, and they were like, oh, I walked in. He goes, no, no, I want you to read this other character. So I thought I was off the hook. So this other character, there were three scenes. They were all sex scenes. One was a sex scene in a bathroom stall. One was a sex scene on a floor. Um, one was a sex scene uh, up against a wall. I can't remember. And um, the lines were like, fuck me, you rock god, fuck me. Mm -hmm. And another part of the scene is when Jim Morrison reaches inside her and grabs her diaphragm and rips it out and says, you won't be needing this. Like, that's the scene. So I'm oh like, oh, holy shit, what am I going to do? And there's a reader, and it's this really nice, very effeminate guy. And so <laughs> I wasn't intimidated by the guy. And I was like, How do, what do we do? Like he, He'd been auditioning. He'd been reading for everybody. He goes, you know what? This is what you do. You pretend this is rehearsal. Mm -hmm. Pretend it's rehearsal, it's not an audition, we're just rehearsing these scenes. Mm -hmm. I was like, that is, that's fantastic advice. So we're doing the scene, we're rolling around the floor. <laughs> I keep losing my page. I'm like, what page am I? Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> fuck me, you rock hot, fuck me. And then um, finally, I finish the scene, and by this time, we're under the desk that Oliver is sitting behind. And he's standing up and he's leaning over the desk. He goes, great, thank you so much. And I said, oh, you don't want me to do the other scenes? He goes, nope, that was great. I was like, okay, so you don't need to see me fuck on the couch or fuck against the wall? <laughs> and he was like, will this be your first movie? I said, yes. <laughs> that's how I got my first, that's how I got my SAG card. That's so funny. <laughs> don't try this at home, kids. It wouldn't work a second time. You know, um, Ann Dowd also said that her SAG card was her, that was her moment when she said she made it. Yeah. Just it's like circle her. Because, by the way, at the time, you couldn't be in a SAG production if you weren't SAG and you couldn't yeah. get a SAG card unless you got into a SAG production. So it was like, how do I break down this wall? <laughs> by rolling go. around on the floor. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> uh, best story you have from the set of Girlfriend's Guide to Divorce? One moment in, in the show is that I had to have really intentionally bad sex with uh, C. Thomas Howell. Mm -hmm. But it's almost worse having bad sex that's fake mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> on camera <laughs> than bad sex that's actual bad sex that you can sort of get out of. Um, it was like my idea, my idea, I did this to myself, was that he <laughs> should be like a rabbit. Uh -huh. like, like just w way too fast for yeah, the yeah, feeling. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but then I had to lay underneath him while he did the rabbit. And um, <laughs> it was so awkward. And then I literally had to just focus on not having um, rape face because <laughs> it was so uncomfortable. God bless him. He, he, would, he would do anything. He was so open and available to just take direction and... Anyway, that's <laughs> sex scenes are no fun. <laughs> All right, how about the last time you were recognized in public? Uh, you know, it just happens. It happens 
I, I, I just went to New York, so it happens a lot on airplanes. People like to ask for pictures after you've been on a really long flight. Oh, which is really, how, how not, nice of them. Just <laughs> no, please ask at the beginning of the flight and at the end of the flight. Also, on flights, you know, it's the worst lighting in the yeah, world. It's sort of it green. Is. It's so bad. And those pictures, they get on social media and they last forever. <sighs> they, don't, they never go away. The internet is forever. It's frustrating. Um, well, I was going to say worst audition experience, but I think you already, yeah, gave, I think me I already gave me that one. Yeah, I that one, yeah. Full circle. Yeah. Lisa, thank you so much for thank being you. here. Uh, we look forward to season four, and season five is on its way. Awesome. And um, congratulations on a thank wonderful you. series. Thank you so much.